Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be episode 2 of my bookshelf tour series. So a few months ago I uploaded my episode 1 which was a bookshelf tour overview just explaining how I organize my bookshelves overall and I also announced in that video that I'm going to be doing a series of bookshelf tour videos dedicated to the different parts of my bookshelf. I thought that would be fun just instead of trying to cram in every single book on my shelves into one bookshelf tour video, I thought I could separate my bookshelf tour videos into the different sections of my bookshelves so that it gives me more of an opportunity to talk a bit more in depth about the books on my shelves and it's just, it'll give you more bookshelf tour content, which of course I love and I'm sure you guys enjoy as well because I am also quite interested looking at other people's shelves as well, so I think it's always so fun. I'm going to be starting on the top shelf, working top to bottom in my bookshelf tour series. I usually do it in age order, so top left I have my children's picture books and then it goes into middle grade the very few young adult books that I have, and then we end with a few of my adult contemporary books, so we're going to stop when it hits those. So today I'm just going to go over my children's picture books, my middle grade novels, and my very few young adult novels, and then later on in the series of videos I will have a whole dedicated section to, like over here I have all of my Shakespeare plays and my other plays. I have children's classics, which is gonna get their own video as well. There are a few children's classics with my picture books. That's a little different, but I wanted the picture books to be with each other just for size reasons. Yeah, so my English libraries and my special edition classics are all gonna get their own video. And then I'll have like my all of my Pan Macmillans are over here as well as over there. They'll get their own video just so that you guys can, if you're interested in a specific part of my bookshelves but maybe not interested in another part, that just gives you different opportunities to watch different videos about the different types of books I have on my shelves in the different sections. Um, so without further rambling on, I'm going to take you guys up and show you first my children's picture books and then go from there. It's a little awkward of an angle, so I don't know if I'll be able to take down all of the picture books, so I'm just going to talk about them with them on my shelves and we'll see. We'll see what I'm able to do. It's just a really awkward angle because I am very short. My tripod doesn't go that high, so I'm going to be balancing you guys on a few chairs. And I'm going to balance myself on a chair because I, I can't reach my top shelf either. So <laughs> anyway, let's go talk about some books. Okay, so this is really the best angle that I can get. So I'm going to start from left to right. So all the way at the left... I have The Polar Express by Chris Van Allsburg, The Night Before Christmas, Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak, then a book called Splash Dance, which is actually illustrated and written by a an illustrator that went to my art school and she had a talk, so I actually went to that talk and she did a little doodle and um, she signed it and autographed it, so that's really special. And then Happy Birthday, Madame Chapeau, which is a really, really sweet book. Um, and then next to that, we have Sylvia's Bookshop, which is about the original owner of Shakespeare and Company. And then this blue Bedtime Stories book, that is the first book that my parents read to my sister and I when we would go to sleep at night when we were kids. So that's really the first book that introduced me to a lot of classic fairy tales, like... Goldilocks and the Three Bears was my favorite. My sister loved Hansel and Gretel. So that's a very special book for us. And then Did I Ever Tell You How Lucky You Are by Dr. Seuss, one of my favorites. Then next to that we have Winnie the Pooh, which this one is also the one that I grew up reading. My parents read to my sister and I. That's how we were really introduced to Winnie the Pooh, so that book is super special to us. And then All the Buildings in New York, that is a book that I got when I graduated high school, which has different illustrations of all the buildings in New York City, because I, was, I went to college in New York City. And then we have Caps for Sale, which is one of the books that inspired me to become an illustrator. And then The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein, and then I have more Shel Silverstein books here. Um, the Light in the Attic, Runny Babbit, 
Where the Sidewalk Ends, another edition of Where the Sidewalk Ends, and a special edition of The Giving Tree. I feel like I should just move The Giving Tree next to Michelle Silverstein books, but... <laughs> um, and then The Little Prince, and then a pop-up version of The Little Prince, because The Little Prince is one of my very favorite books ever. Then over here I have a book, Wild Geese Flying, which I found secondhand at a bookshop and I haven't read it yet, but I thought it was such a beautiful edition that I wanted to grab it. This is a board book version of A Midsummer Night's Dream, a fairy's primer. So this is for babies to be introduced to Shakespeare plays in different classics, but this is specifically Little Master Shakespeare. And I got this because it's my favorite Shakespeare play, A Midsummer Night's Dream. This book is hilarious. <laughs> so this is my book of poems, and that is actually drawn and illustrated by me. So this is a book of poems that I made in school. I was always an incredibly talented writer and illustrator, obviously. <laughs> oh my god. This is so funny. A windy day. That's apparently what I thought wind looked like. <laughs> oh my gosh. About the author. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> there I am. About the author. Absolutely nothing. She was too young to have any about information about her. <laughs> so this is my first book that I ever written and illustrated myself. Um, and, you know, what a treasure it is. <laughs> So that is with my other children's books because I'm just that important that I need to be with all of these incredible classics <laughs> right next to Beatrix Potter. Beatrix Potter is one of the illustrators that has had the greatest influence on me. This is the box set that I grew up reading from, but for this past Christmas I just got the full box set. This I believe is 1 through 12, um, so it's not the full 1 through 23. But this is the edition that I read from as a kid, so it's really, really special to me, and I absolutely love it. So these are all of my picture books. I sort of have them in height order, and this is going to bother me now, so I'm just going to move the giving tree. That's better. There we go. This is such a gorgeous edition. So it has Shel Silverstein's signature on the slipcase, and then this is what the book looks like. Absolutely beautiful. This is one of my very favorite copies, and I love that this color green is like one of my favorite colors. This looks so pretty. So now I'm going to move on to the right is my middle grades and more novels. Now moving to the right, I have these books that I just bought. They are the Series of Unfortunate Events books by Lemony Snicket. I recently listened to The Bad Beginning and The Reptile Room on audiobook, but I loved them so much that I really want to start physically reading them. I grew up watching the Jim Carrey adaptation. I know that there's the really great Netflix series that's out now, but I never read the books for some reason, and I'm so excited to read them now, especially when I really have such a great appreciation for middle grade books, and Lemony Snicket's writing is incredible. And I just love these editions. I think they're so beautiful. These books do really feel like classics, and I absolutely adore the illustrations as well. So they are just such beautiful books. And then moving now, starting from left to right, I have... My lights are going to get in the way for a lot of this. The first book I have is The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo. I have a lot of Kate DiCamillo books, but they aren't next to each other because this is supposed to sort of be a rainbow but not really and it is one of my very favorite books. I loved it when I was a child and I actually just reread it recently through audiobook and it was so wonderful to experience one of my favorite books again. This is probably my favorite illustration out of all of them. Zespero stared up at her in wonder. Such a great illustration and such a wonderful book. So this is a very, very favorite of mine. Speaking of a very favorite, this is Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. I have two copies of this book. This is the 40th anniversary edition and this is a little mass market paperback because I want to thoroughly annotate this book because this is one of my very, very favorite books. It means the absolute world to me. It's all about the importance and the beauty of our immortal lives and taking advantage of the time that we have when we have it. And it's such a gorgeous story. And so 
this book is full of my favorite quotes and just so many things that I want to annotate and have down and have little tabs. If you haven't read Tug of Lasting, I can't recommend it enough. There's also a fantastic movie adaptation with Alexis Bledel, who plays Rory in Gilmore Girls, and if you don't know, I am a big Gilmore Girls fan, so I love Alexis Bledel, and it's such a wonderful adaptation. Here we have another Kate DiCamillo book. This is Because of Winn-Dixie. It's such a beautiful story about the friendship between a little girl and her dog. The next book is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. I recently watched the movie adaptation of it for the first time I want to say last year at some point with my best friend Emma and I wanted to get a copy of the book and read it but I have yet to read it so hopefully I'll read it very very soon but I loved the movie and I can't wait to see the differences and the similarities between the movie and the book so very excited to read this eventually. Then we have The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. This is a book that I kind of feel silly to still have on my shelves because I feel like I'm never going to reread it but it's one of the books that really got me into reading for pleasure when I was younger. I keep it for sentimental reasons, really. Then I have Wonder by R.J. Palacio. This is one of my very favorite books. This book is really just about kindness and acceptance, and it's a gorgeous story. I also love the movie adaptation. It's one of my very favorites. Um, I absolutely love it. Then I have The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. I was just talking about this book in my last video and I thought it was a middle grade but a lot of you told me that it's actually an adult fantasy novel and I was very shocked. I think because of the the cover, I don't know why, I, the cover just made me think of uh, young, young adult or middle grade. Um, but apparently it's adult fantasy. But a lot of people said that it does read like a middle grade. So very excited to read this. I hopefully want to read it very, very soon. Then I have The Boy, the Mold, the Fox, and the Horse by Charlie Maxey. This is one of my favorite books. It's a gorgeous book. Really, it doesn't have that much of a fluid plot. It does, but not, not really. It's mainly a gorgeous volume of vignettes with these beautiful ink illustrations. It's about kindness and bravery and asking for help and love and friendship and just it's such an emotional heartwarming it just this book feels like a really big hug and I absolutely love it the illustrations are just stunning absolutely stunning like look at those end papers the end papers are just beautiful the whole thing is absolutely gorgeous so I couldn't recommend giving this book a read enough. It's just one of my very favorites. I love it so much. The audiobook is also fantastic. Then I have The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Moyers. I again really want to read this book hopefully very soon. This was given to me very kindly by a subscriber. I think her name was Gabby. Thank you so much Gabby. I can't wait to read this book. It's a book about books and it just sounds like everything I love. I love books about books and I'm very excited to give it a read and fall in love with Walter Moyer's writing because I know he has some other wonderful books as well. Then I have Aristotle and Dante Discovered the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alire Sanz. I read this book last year. I got it, I believe, from my friend Lucy, so thank you so much, Lucy. I loved this book. As you can see, it won so many awards, and it's a really beautiful coming-of-age story. I thought it was a wonderful read. Then I have Bridge to Terabithia by Katherine Patterson. This is the special 40th anniversary edition. This book is one that breaks my heart every time I watch the, the movie or read the book. The movie is... Um, one that I grew up watching and then I read the book. This is a beautiful book, again about friendship, but also the magic of our imaginations and creating worlds so vividly in our minds that they really do feel real. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Very short, but um, a wonderful read, so highly recommend reading it if you haven't. Then I have Odd and the Frost Giants by Neil Gaiman. This is illustrated by Brett Helquist, and this is the first Neil Gaiman book I ever read when I was younger. This is about Odd and his very frosty adventures in Norway. There are giants and bears and foxes, and it's a wonderful, wonderful book. It also has 
gorgeous illustrations. They're so lovely. That My favorite thing about middle grade and me as an illustrator um, is just illustrations. I, just, you can't, you can't beat a, a book with illustrations. I mean, I'm a little biased because I am an illustrator, but <laughs> they just add so much to the story and they're so beautiful. So this is one of my very favorites, very sentimental because this is one of the books I grew up reading and loving. Then I have the book Walk Two Moons. I actually don't have the dust jacket anymore, but this is another book that I grew up reading and loving. I haven't reread it in ages, so I honestly barely remember anything about it. So I would love to do a reread and rediscover what this book is about. This is another favorite by Kate DiGamello. This is The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, illustrated by Bagram Ibatulin. I think I might be pronouncing their name wrong. I'm so sorry. But this is about the miraculous journey of a doll. He is a stuffed bunny and it's his adventures um, getting lost from the little girl that owns him and the adventures that he goes on. Edward Tulane is quite a grumpy and stuck up bunny but you can't help but love him as well. This rabbit goes on all these adventures and meets a bunch of different people and how all these different people in his journey to sort of finding someone to care for him where it leads him and it's just it's a beautiful beautiful story I absolutely love The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane and I highly recommend reading it and also Kate DiCamillo is such an incredible writer you can't really go wrong with her books. Again, here we have another one. This is The Tiger Rising by Katie Gamillo. This I actually haven't read for ages, so I really don't remember much about it, but when I was younger I remember really loving it. I read so many Katie Gamillo books. Then we have one of my absolute favorite books. This is A Monster Calls, a novel by Patrick Ness inspired by an idea from Siobhan Dowd, illustrations by Jim Kay. Jim Kay is another one of my favorite illustrators. This book is incredibly heartbreaking and incredibly beautiful. It was also turned into a movie which was gorgeous. It had Felicity Jones in it and so many amazing actresses and actors. And this book is about how Fear is sort of personified into this monster and how this monster is following our main character and he is visited by this monster but there's a monster in his dreams that haunts him uh, every night but the monster that arrives is different from the one in his dreams and it's asking him for the truth and our main character Connor doesn't really understand what truth the monster is asking for and this monster showed up right when his mother started um, with her treatments because she's ill and it's all about um, his relationship with this monster and it asking for the truth and him not really knowing what that truth is and then eventually discovering what exactly the monster means by that and it's just such such a gorgeous book. I can't recommend it enough. Then we have The Outsiders by Essie Hinton. I haven't read this book since high school and I definitely want to reread it very very soon. Then I have The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, a book that has made everybody cry. Um, if you've seen the movie as well, the movie of course will make you cry. This is the 10th anniversary edition so beautiful. John Boyne is a wonderful writer. This is such a heartbreaking story but one that I think is a is a must read. The next book is Flipped by Wendelin Van Dranen and this is another book that I read in school when I was very young that I absolutely loved as well. This is a dual perspective narrative following a young boy and a young girl and how in the beginning of the novel the young boy is really embarrassed by the young girl and in the beginning the young girl has a huge huge crush on this young boy and it's about how the narratives flip between the two about him not really wanting to be friends with her and her having this huge crush on him and it's how they come come of age together and then eventually how their feelings for one another flip. So yes, it's a, it's a wonderful book. It's also been adapted into a movie and the movie is so wonderful as well. So I love this book and again, highly recommend. All these books are so, so fantastic, which is why I have them on my shelves, of course. 
The next three books are in a series that is Ashes, Chains, and Forged by Laurie Halls Anderson. My old roommate that I lived with um, in college, she loved these books. These were actually her editions and she gave them to me because she got new signed editions and she wanted to gift them to me. I have yet to read them, but she loves them. They're some of her favorites. I don't know too much about this series of books, but I do know that it is set in the time of slavery and it's about our main characters trying to break the chains that bind them and forge their way forward. And I can't wait to read them. I think they're going to be wonderful. I also love Lori Halls Anderson. She's such a wonderful writer as well. The next two books are Nevermore and Wondersmith. It's very reminiscent of Harry Potter, but also very different and unique in its own ways, and it's very creative. The world building in these two books is fantastic, and it's just a, a wonderful story. This is also such a gorgeous edition. You can see I loved it because I put so many annotations in, and this is just such a beautiful copy. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. So these are all the books on this shelf, and then we will move over to the next one. Now this section of my bookshelves is starting to become some of my very favorites. First I read Fangirl and absolutely loved it. I became a huge Rainbow Rowell fan and then it turned into Carry On is a story in a story in Fangirl. If you can hear Willow barking, I'm so sorry. <laughs> she wants attention, um, but I'm just gonna keep going. Carry On and Wayward Son, this is the first and second book and then there's the third book. I kind of have fallen out of love with Rainbow Rowell and the Carry On series, unfortunately. I actually went to see her in person, so this edition, I think all these three books are signed, which is so cool, and I'll always have a really special place in my heart for the Carry On series and for Rainbow Rowell. But I think just as I get older, I'm so much more of a classics reader, and my tastes have changed quite a lot. I also have a manga version of Fangirl, which Fangirl is just really special to me because when I read it when I was younger, I saw a lot of myself in the main character, Kath, so that's why Fangirl and the Carry On series is very special to me, but I just don't see myself rereading it all that much. Then we have my absolute favorite illustrator and writer on the face of the earth, and that is Brian Selznick. I recently uploaded a reading vlog where I talk about my complete adoration for Brian Selznick. So we have his first book, The Invention of Hugo Cabret, and then his second book, Wonderstruck, and then his third book is The Marvels, which I just read recently. It was one of my favorite books of 2021, my favorite non-classic book of 2021. And it's on a little pedestal right in my room, so it's not on my bookshelves, it's on display. Um, and then we have his most recent short story collection, Kaleidoscope, which I recently read and absolutely adored. It is amazing. He is my favorite illustrator on the face of the earth. This book is one of my most prized possessions. It's one of my very favorite books ever, 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 ever. Like, please, if you get anything out of this bookshelf tour video, read Brian Selznick, especially The Invention of Hugo Cabret. Um, all of his books, but Hugo just holds the... probably... if I had to pick one book on this shelf to save in a burning fire if my house went up in flames and I could only grab one book, it would probably be The Invention of Hugo Cabret because it means the whole world to me. Please read it. Please love Brian Selznick. Um, you will not be disappointed. His books are told in words and in pictures and that is one of the things that has shaped me my entire life and why I want to be an illustrator today. What he does with words and pictures is exactly what I want to do and to see someone doing it so successfully, and the person that has inspired me since I was nine years old, it's just, it's such a special place in my heart. I love Brian Selznick. I could go on and on and on, but, um, but I won't, because we'll be here for forever. <laughs> Here's a little sneak peek of what the illustrations look like in his short story collection. They are just absolutely stunning. Then I have the Pages & Co series. This is by Anna James. 
I just read the first book in the series. This is actually the third book. I have to get the second because I want to continue on. I got this from Waterstones and this is signed by the author so I wanted to get this specific edition because they it had beautiful sprayed edges and it was signed by the author so I wanted to, to order this one even before getting the second book. This is also beautifully illustrated as well and there is Anna James's signature. Um, Anna James is such a clever writer. I love what she has created with these stories. This is another book about books. It is fantastic. The first book is about this young girl who her family owns and runs this bookshop called Pages & Co. and how when she hits a certain age, I think she's 11 or 12, the literary characters that she loves very much and that feel like friends to her start to appear in the bookshop and she discovers that she is called a book wanderer and that she's able to wander in and out of books and the characters are able to appear in the bookshop. It's just such a wonderful, wonderful story also about a mystery with her parents. It's a fantastic series. Um, I love the first book. I can't wait to continue on. Then I have Matt Haig's amazing Christmas series, A Boy Called Christmas, The Girl Who Saved Christmas, Father Christmas and Me, and The Truth Pixie. I just got The Truth Pixie for Christmas this past year. I have yet to read it. I think I'm going to save it for next Christmas. These are also all illustrated by Chris Mould, who is another one of my favorite illustrators. The first book is about how Father Christmas came to be. The Girl Who Saved Christmas is about the girl that helped Christmas turn into what it is. And then Father Christmas and Me is about them together. It's a wonderful series. I don't want to give too much away. And then The Truth Pixie. The Truth Pixie is a character in the series. She appears for the first time in the first book. But this is so wonderful. These feel like modern classics. I read them every year. They are perfect to put you in the cozy Christmassy spirit. I love the illustrations. They are so beautiful and charming. Chris Mould has such a wonderful way to use pen and ink. It's just he's so talented. I love his work and he really brings the story to life and adds so much character to it as well. He has such a distinct style and I love how he, I just love how he illustrates. Oh, look at that. Amazing. Then I have How to Stop Time and the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I haven't read the Midnight Library yet, but I have read and loved How to Stop Time. This is illustrated by Chris Riddell, another one of my favorite illustrators. These are two adult books, but I wanted to put all of my Matt Haig books together, so that's why they're here. This book is all about this man who ages very, very slowly, and he has lived through a lot of historical events. One of the people that he has actually met is the real William Shakespeare, so he was alive around the time of Shakespeare, and he crossed paths with Shakespeare, and then it goes through him to modern day trying to deal with this condition of aging very, very slowly, and how he has to keep creating new identities for himself to remain undetected. And then The Midnight Library, I haven't read yet. So many people love it. I have heard a few mixed things about The Midnight Library though, so we'll see what I think about it. But yes, all my Matt Haig books I wanted to keep together. Then I have one of my very, 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 very favorite book series, one of my very favorite books. It is The Giver Quartet by Lois Lowry. First it's The Giver, then Gathering Blue, then Messenger, then Sun. This is a book series that was one of the first book series to make me fall in love with reading. Again, if, the, if my house was on fire and I could only save a few books, it would be The Invention of Hugo Cabret and also The Giver Quartet. I don't want to say too much about these books because they are so special to experience on your own, but just know they are some of my very, very favorites. They are set in a dystopian world and it's really about the beauty of breaking free of that dystopia. It was supposed to be kind of a utopia, but it turns into something else. The messages in this book are groundbreaking and breathtaking and beautiful and heartwarming, and I can't recommend reading this book series enough. A lot of people don't realize that it's a quartet. A lot of people just read The Giver in school, um, which I read The Giver in school, didn't know that it was a series of books, and then I reread The Giver, fell in love with it, and continued on with the whole series. I cried my eyes out when I finished it, and I can't recommend it enough. It is incredible, absolutely incredible. 
So those are all the books on this shelf. I'm going to move over to the last section of my bookshelves. So this is the last section of books that I'll be going over in this video. And I'm going to stop at Sally Rooney. So where Sally Rooney starts is where my adult contemporary books start. But I will be going till Perks of Being a Wallflower. So continuing with my love of The Giver, I have my original version of the book. I actually got this at the Strand bookstore in the city and that trip always meant a lot to me because that's when I saw this book. I remembered reading it and liking it in school and I was like, you know what, I want to try and read it on my own and that's when I really fell in love with it. And then I have The Giver graphic novel which is adapted by P. Craig Russell. It is a wonderful, wonderful adaptation. It's gorgeously illustrated and I just absolutely adore it. So I love the story of The Giver. It is one of my very favorites, as you can tell, because I have so many different copies of it. This is another one that a lot of people have read in school as well. This book is set in 1943 in Copenhagen, this young girl's journey dealing with the times of the Holocaust during the war, and it is such an impactful story. I really love war stories, especially ones set during the time of the Holocaust and World War One and Two. Then the rest of the books are Alice Oseman. So we have the Heartstopper series, so Heartstopper Volume 1. This is a graphic novel about um, a boy-boy romance. This is the US version, so it is actually all in teal colors, but the UK version is all in black and white. Oh, I have. <laughs> I ordered from Alice Oseman's online shop a print from Heartstopper, which I think is just adorable. So as you can see, they are they're black and white. And then the American, the US versions are in that teal color. Um, it's, they're such a heart, heartwarming series. I love Heartstopper. They are just so cozy and comforting. I love Nick and Charlie. They are the sweetest. Then we have the rest of Alice Oseman's books. I have read all of them except Radio Silence. So Radio Silence is there. And then we have this Winter and Nick and Charlie, which are two novellas, and then we have Solitaire. Solitaire is the book that started Heartstopper because the two main characters, Nick and Charlie, are side characters in Solitaire. This is mainly about Charlie's sister, Tori. It says this is not a love story, but it is in fact kind of a love story. Um, and then we have the two novellas. This is literally a love story and Time to Pretend We're Perfect Family in This Winter. So these two novellas are mainly focusing around Nick and Charlie. Tori does have um, a role in these as well because she's Charlie's sister, obviously. But such wonderful stories and they're illustrated by Alice Oseman. This is a limited signed edition because I got it through Waterstones. I love doing that. So yes, this is so, so sweet. Oh, and I, I annotated it. That's, that's me. That's not a, <laughs> that's not illustrated. They're so cute. I just love them so much. <laughs> and then the very last book for this bookshelf tour video is Stephen Chbosky's The Perks of Being a Wallflower. This is one of my favorite books that I read when I was younger as well. I actually did my own book cover redesign as it was supposed to be a movie poster but also book cover that I did for one of my illustration classes and that was my redesign of what I wanted to make the cover but I really love this cover. I love the simplicity. This is another gorgeous coming-of-age story and it deals with a lot of um, issues of mental health and friendship and your first crush and romance and love and it's such a great story for young people. It's such a great young adult novel and very impactful, very beautiful. I absolutely love it, so yes. So those are all of my children's books middle grades and young adults. And then we start with Sally Rooney and we continue on with my adult fiction, but that will be in episode three. Okay, and there we have it. Those are all of the books that fit into the category of young readers. These are really the cream of the crop 
for me. Um, I have read a lot of young adult and a lot of young reader fiction, um, but I don't tend to keep all of it. If I don't love it, then I'm going to donate it so that someone else has a better opportunity to appreciate it maybe more than I have. And so all the ones that have stayed on my shelves are really the ones that mean the world to me. It's definitely personal preference, so I know that so many people, especially on booktube, love young adult fiction. I'm not as much of a young adult fiction reader. I'm much more uh, into middle grade reading, um, which as you can tell, I love middle grade so much. But anyway, Willow keeps barking because she wants, she hears me speaking and she wants attention. Should I go get her so you guys can say hello? Let me go get her. Say hello to everyone. <laughs> so anyway, she was barking at me because she hears me talking and she wants, she wants to be part of the action, right? You wanna be part of the action. Thank you. I try to keep my books as a really nicely curated library for my taste. I want to keep all the books on my shelves that I really love and... What are you looking at? <laughs> She's like... <laughs> what? Yeah, so I try to keep my very favorite books on my shelves and if I don't care for a book too much then donate it so that someone else has a better chance of enjoying it a little bit more than me. And something that I wanted to say before I go really quickly is thank you so much because there are so many new people here and it is so exciting to see new faces and new names in the comments and I love talking to you guys and I just wanted to say welcome. Um, when I first started my channel, I used to say at the end of my videos, thank you for being part of my little family. And what's so wonderful is that my little family is has grown so much since then and is still growing and it means the whole world to me. I care about you all so much and I love talking to you in the comments and on social media. When you guys send me letters in my P.O. box, it just, it means so much more than I can say that I can put into words. To know that such kind and loving and caring people who also love books and are kindred spirits to me watch my videos and enjoy them and are just... I, I consider all of you guys my friends. I hope that's okay. Um, <laughs> and I love each and every one of you very, very much and your support just means more than I literally... I know I already said that, but more than I could put into words, really. Um, Willow also agrees. She loves... I always tell her when someone says hello, because you guys always say hello to Willow in the comments, and <laughs> I love it so much. Um, and she loves it too. So, yes, thank you so much for joining me and being a part of my little family. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this video and are excited for the other videos to come, as well as episode 3 of the Bookshelf Tour series is going to be all about my adult literary fiction, which I'm very excited for, and then we're going to get into classics. Oh, it's going to be so great. Um, very excited, and yes. So, anyway, we are going to bid you adieu for now. I will see you guys soon in another video. Again, thank you so much for joining me and watching this video and being so wonderful and lovely and kind. Um, Willow and I will see you very, very soon in another video. Happy reading. <laughs>